All right, welcome back to another video, guys. Like I said, after that last video we did on the Trans Am, we'd be getting over here on the Mazda, getting some buffing done, see what we can do with this paint. And here's a little section I did with my small buffer. So I think this paint ought to come back pretty nice. I do believe if you look up here, you can see some peeling clear. Uh, this should be single stage, which I'd say 90% of the car is. I believe someone painted and cleared the hood and then if you look over on this side, they painted and cleared this quarter panel for some reason. You can see the blend marks here, and you can see the blend marks there. So I'll probably try to buff those and blend them in as we're cleaning this thing up, but I think I'm gonna start over on this side and work this fender out and see what we can get. So here's a little before. Uh, here's some overspray. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about that just yet but we'll kind of start with the fender here. You can see how chalky it is. So we'll set up a little camera and maybe a time lapse and see what we can get. Right, guys there's a first stage got a little spot right here i'm working on but uh for a first quick pass on the fender not bad i mean you can tell what a substantial difference that is and that's just a wool pad so then when we step up to the foam that'll be a huge difference i mean there is what it was and then there's what it is so we'll keep plugging away at this thing and should be a pretty crazy transformation when we're done with it. can see the door has come out pretty nice and you can obviously see some pretty pronounced dents through here uh, I think we're gonna get those PDR'd in the future <clears throat> but for now we're just gonna continue to keep buffing but it's coming along really nice haven't showed you guys the front bumper yet we'll do a walk around here shortly as I mentioned the hood and both headlight buckets have been resprayed on the top not sure why my in-laws can't remember why it was done. They do remember somebody bumped them on the back side here, which is why it's resprayed. So not too sure why this was done up front here, but it's looking pretty good. You can see that substantial difference between the quarter panel here, which is how everything was to what it is now. Yeah, quite a few dings through there, but yeah, big difference. So. Let's jump over and hit this quarter panel and keep moving along. Uh, but first, I'm just using a Harbor Freight buffer, one of the cheapest ones, one of their buffing pads and some Meguiar's uh, cutting compound and just doing it on the cheap. And for this car, it's turning out great. You can see a big difference between the roof and the door here as well. So we'll continue on to this uh, back quarter. Well, sorry guys, had a cool transformation time lapse on this quarter panel for you, but uh, decided for some reason I didn't want to film it. And it would have been a good one too. So, it's getting shiny. Kind of just blended it up here into the sail panel of the roof. You can see where I stopped. 
I'm not sure if I'm gonna do the roof yet or continue to move around the back. I'm not sure. I think I may go ahead and do the roof because it's so, there's such small surface area. I may go ahead and knock it out real quick. I went ahead and carried it all the way around the back of the hatch here. Looking pretty good. There was a blend mark on the quarter. You can barely see it right there. Kind of used to look like that. So, it's, whoever reshot this quarter panel, it, it seems like, the way I'm looking at it, seems it's blending a little bit better than the hood. So, uh, they may have been done by different people. I don't know. We'll see when I get this uh, buffed because I kind of kind of did it right into here a little bit just to see how it would blend as you can tell the bumper is super chalky so that ought to be a pretty good transformation I'll get you guys set up on a time lapse for that so I think I'm going to finish out today with the bumper and then I'll probably get this thing fired up and spin it around in the garage that way I can do the uh, passenger side of it so then after that it's really just hitting it with a foam pad and then doing all the final final stuff like ceramic coating and uh, basically just really wipe the thing down inside and out and then do the do the ceramic coat last so we'll set you guys up for this bumper here and see how this thing turns out Check that out. Not bad for almost a 40 year old plastic bumper. So foam pad ought to brighten her up a little bit. There's still a little bit of a haze, but to be expected, I didn't color sand this car. We're not going that deep with it. Just want to get some shine back in her and make her look good again. Cause this is just going to be a fun little you know, nice day driver, that's all. Something we can still take out and go enjoy. So, I think that's going to do it for today. Uh, we're going to come back out, whether it be tomorrow, next day, whatever. But next clip, it'll be a new day. And hopefully we'll be slinging this thing around and knocking the passenger side out. Okay, left off at the back end here. I think I showed you guys, got it all squared away with the wool pad. And now we are ready for this quarter, this half of the roof, and the door. So we'll go ahead and start on this quarter panel and work our way this way. And then I got some finishing compounds as well. I guess one compound really for the foam pad. And I'm basically going to hit a couple spots and see if the foam really brightens it up any with the finish compound. And if it doesn't, I don't think I'll waste time uh, foam padding it. Pretty much just wipe it down and be ready for uh, the ceramic coat. And then obviously it really needs a detailed cleaning in the engine bay uh, and areas like that, uh, door jams and such. But for now, let's work our way around and get this side knocked out so we can all have this thing uh, done up and, you know, the whole wool pad. So. Let's hop to it and we'll probably set up for another time lapse and watch this chalky paint slowly be shiny now.
Hope you guys enjoyed that little time lapse of the door. It turned out pretty nice as well. You can see it's got some dingers all down it too. Uh, this seems like it's, it's hard to tell in here, but it seems like the quarter panel matches the paint better than what the hood does. Cause even from this angle, you can see more of an orange compared to this nice, pretty red. <clears throat> so I think this quarter actually matches a lot better. Uh, this clear coat is definitely old. It was a pain to buff. It didn't really care for it, but whatever, it works. So everywhere has been completely wool padded. But yeah, you can really see the difference there. And that clear coat on the hood's in really bad shape, but it's not peeling, so we're going to roll with it. It'll make for, you know, a good looking car. It's honest, it's original. I mean, okay, you know, it's had the hood touched up and this quarter panel touched up, but I don't know what you would consider that. 85% original paint. I think that's a good, you know, fair, wear, fair percentage to say, but man, I'm very happy with the reflection on this thing. So I think right now, I'm gonna blow all the dust off this turd and clean all this stuff up. And I think, I think we'll be ready for the foam pad. Don't think I'm gonna to get to that tonight, but I know I might hit one spot, just kinda of see what it does, see how I feel after I uh, clean this thing off. But pretty happy with it overall. Even if I left it like this, I'd, I'd be pretty stoked. And then go through, clean out, clean up the door jams. Uh, Father-in-law already cleaned out the around uh, where the hatch seals down in those channels. He already cleaned all that out. Door jams need some detailing, and under the hood needs a little cleaning as well. But that'll come with time. I think most important is getting this thing polished up externally. Interior is already clean, and get this side trim back on it, and it'll be set. And then also. This stuff here, as you can tell, I ripped some of it off buffing. I think what I'm gonna do is rip off as much as I can. We'll wire wheel this, tape everything off. I'll actually probably drape plastic over the whole car, tape off just that section, and we'll paint this trim black. And that'll just really, really dress this thing up. Because overall, you know, it's in really good shape, so. Kind of nice having the garage all clean and organized too, being able to get to everything. So yeah, we're gonna move on to the foam pad. And if I don't end up foam padding, obviously you guys will know, but we're gonna clean up here and see what we can do with that foam pad. Okay, new day. And we're out here finishing up the Mazda and got my finishing swirl remover compound, which I've never used this kind before. Um, normally I'm the type of guy that does restoration work as you guys very well know. So I do full paint jobs and after I clear coat, I always cut and buff and I've never been like a detail guy as far as grabbing a car and just giving them a buff. seems like I've, I've done it a couple times and I always get bad swirl marks with my wool pad and maybe I'm using, maybe I shouldn't be starting with the wool when you're not doing any form of cutting. Um, I could be wrong, I don't know. But it's not bad, so I'm gonna go through and um, it's gotten dusty just from some of the buffing wheel dust and also made some little sneak peek here. A Little bit of progress back here and up front on this car, which I've already got a video started on it. Uh, like I had mentioned, doing all the brake stuff. But anyway, that's irrelevant. So I'm gonna go through, get this thing dusted off and we're gonna try the foam pad and some of this swirl remover and get some of these swirl marks out. <clears throat> Hopefully it works. Um, either way, it looks way better than it did. I just hate seeing buffing swirl marks on a car. It's a pet peeve of mine, and then here I am, the one leaving them on this thing. So we're gonna do our best to get this thing off. I don't have a good foam pad for my little small buffer, so I'm gonna stay away from the uh, small areas for now, I think and just hit these big major spots that I can with my foam pad on the big buffer in this compound. So this isn't gonna be like a huge transformation, so I wouldn't expect a whole lot, but let's see how this thing turns out. Set you guys up on another 
a little time lapse here and see what we get. Okay, probably hard to tell on video, but this foam pad actually made quite a bit of difference on this clear coat and even the front bumper. Well, not a whole lot. Like, you can still see, like, some haze, but, I mean, unless I go through and, like, wet sand this entire car, you're never really going to get a little bit of that haze out. But it did get the actual swirl marks out. So if you know what you're looking at there, you'll, you'll notice the actual swirled buffing lines are gone. And then there's some stuff uh, kind of left over from the pad kind of etched in this clear coat when I buffed it and it actually took it out so and brightened it up just a little bit so we're going to continue to kind of move around this thing and just keep working our way around really I mean not much left to do Okay, so I essentially got half of the car done. Stopped right here at this corner, so I'm ready to work the back end. And as you can tell, I'm a little tight for space because I don't want to get the car too far out because I got to get the Beetle back in tonight. Uh, it's going really quick. I mean, this swirl remover actually has made a pretty substantial difference. So I'm pretty stoked. It's pretty much getting out all the stuff that I could see outside, at least I think. So I got half the roof done, this entire side, the whole hood, uh, the front bumper, the only spot I couldn't get to because my buffer is too big um, was this little strip down there, which it's obviously not really visible to the, to the eye all that much. So very pleased so far. So I think what I'm gonna do, I wanna get this thing banged out and I've been on a decent streak on keeping a video a week for you guys, and I want to stay on top of that. Uh, so I'm going to figure, well, I'm going to finish this car out, and then I hope, I'll, I'll try to include, I wish I would have done some nice B-roll of the car before I buffed it, completely spaced it, didn't even think about it, <clears throat> but I'll try to throw some before and afters in, or at least do a nice B-roll of it all, you know, polished up. So anyway, I'm going to hurry up hammer out this last half, get it done, because uh, it's buffing really quick. So uh, hopefully next, next clip you guys see, I may even try to pull this thing outside before it gets dark and see what it looks like. So hopefully we'll see some nice B-roll outside, see how this thing looks. Uh, it's a pretty substantial difference for being just about coming up on 38-year-old paint looks way better than. And obviously there's still other details we're gonna address in the future, like the side molding, um, the window scraper covers, the actual plastic that's chipping away. We're gonna redo those in the, in the future as well. So anyway, let's get this thing finished up. I'm gonna quit talking. All right, went ahead and threw it over here to get a little bit more room. And man, pretty made a pretty big difference. And this quarter blends into the paint a lot better than what that hood does. So, like I said, I don't know what's going on with that or who resprayed it because you, know, you can see where the clear is chipping and you can actually see where they either just cleared over the original, but that's definitely the original paint under there. But, yeah, I figured I'd do a walk around before we take it outside. So, we'll see how it looks out in the sunlight. In here, it looks really, really nice. Obviously, there's still a lot more to be desired because, you know, the jams need clean, both doors and the hood area. Um, glass still needs some detailing. Uh, a couple of minor areas like getting into the, you know, around the lights and some of these crevices need a little bit of love. But, you know, that's for the, for the future. 
as for now this thing looks incredible just to get out and drive i mean it looks looks awesome so let's get this thing outside and check it out that stuff did the trick because it looks way better I am actually pretty stoked with this let me do a little bit let me do a little bit better of a walk around here get the uh, wide angle going so we can actually see more of the car since I'm limited on walking space yeah this thing looks incredible way better than the uh, wool pad pretty hyped pretty freaking hyped on this thing not seeing any swirl marks so I'm pretty pumped I'll probably do is uh, get some good cinematic b-roll for you guys to end this off and uh, that'll probably do it for this video after that so yeah let's get some good good video of this thing in the sun guys enjoyed this one uh, got her all you know wiped down finished up for now uh, we'll address a few more things on this car in the future uh, not sure how soon because it's gonna be in the garage for a little while longer so I may kind of tinker with it just a little bit uh, but yeah I think that's gonna do it for this video so stay tuned for another one on the Trans Am getting the brake system dialed in on that thing or at least semi squared away um, anyway, yeah, remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next video.